Turn to Proverbs 7 and verse 8. I'm going to cover three more verses tonight, Lord willing. We're going through um, this account, uh, this historical account of what Solomon witnessed from his own house and that he's sharing with his son to teach him a lesson through this story of avoiding the strange woman. In verse 8, it says, Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. So this is the young man that he saw that is out and about when he shouldn't be. And uh, her corner there is the strange woman that he's warning him about. He's looking through his window there in verse 6, and he sees this young foolish man, and he's passing through the street near her corner. And just to start off with, we can see that there is no new thing under the sun. If you turn to Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9, it's just interesting that the King James Bible is always accurate and up-to-date. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9 says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Hookers have been standing on street corners for thousands of years. Isn't that what he said? Passing through the street near her corner. And we still talk about hookers on the corner, on street corners today, 3,000 years later. So Solomon's warning is just as pertinent today as it was in antiquity. Um, Nothing changes. Human nature does not change. And this is where the young man's trouble begins. If he would have never walked down the street near her corner, he would have never been taken by her. So he walks near her corner. Near is an adverb, and when it's used with verbs of motion, like um, passing through the street near, so it's used with a verb of motion, it means nearer or closer to a place, point, or person. So he's getting in close proximity to this woman's corner. Now, just a practical lesson. If we never get near to where a strange woman hangs out, and that could be the street, right? If you go to certain cities, you would want to stay away from certain parts of the city, certain streets, the red light district, as they would call it. Or that could be the bar. A lot of loose women hang out at bars, and not a good place to find yourself a wife. Or the casino, or the club, right? Or the office party, even, or the frat party. Any of those types of places. If you go near those kind of places where strange women hang out, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to come into contact with them and you're going to end up going the way to her house, as the rest of the verse says. So the best thing to do is just stay away. If we stay away from places where she frequents, we won't be seduced by her. And that's just a good principle in life in general. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We'll get to that verse in, in a little bit. So in Proverbs 5, 8, you'll remember Solomon gave his son warning to go not, stay, stay far away from her. Proverbs 5, 8 says, Remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house, which is precisely the opposite of what this guy is doing. He's heading right to her corner. He's getting right close up to her. Solomon told us in Proverbs 4, 14 through 15 that we should not enter into the way, into the path of the way that leads to evil. He says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. So if he wouldn't have um, passed, look at the words there, passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. And Solomon says, avoid it, pass not by it, go not in the path of the wicked and the way of evil men. So he's using the exact same wording there, which is key to avoiding sin in general is just staying away from it, especially if it's something you have a weakness to, right? If you were an alcoholic, for instance, stay away from the bar, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't go to a bar, would you, Bev, right? Because Not there's... Not unless I was going with a group of people to eat. Right, right. But you wouldn't go there and sit up at the bar or something and, mm-hmm. and no, it's, it's just foolish. Sit next to somebody that's having a drink and nope. start talking, you wouldn't do that, right? No. And that's just, that just makes good sense. So anybody that has any kind of a weakness with anything, just stay away from it. Uh, Jay Adams, in Competent to Counsel, he said, To keep from falling over the edge of a precipice, one should move as far back from that edge as possible. 
and I think that's just good, sound advice. I remember being at the Grand Canyon and seeing those warning signs, and you'd see a picture of a guy like the rock kind of comes out from under his foot, and he's falling down into the canyon because he was standing too close to the edge. And that just kind of reminds me of a spiritual lesson, just don't get so close to the edge. There's no reason to walk right up and be, you know, right. If, I mean, if, if God says right here is the line that you absolutely cannot cross, you know, to stand there and then kind of look over the edge of the line just to see, that's just, that's just not wise. Yeah, and you just, don't need to check out the price of the alcohol or the price of the hooker either. Hey, right, exactly. And you don't need to try to convert her to Jesus and, mm-hmm. or convert the drunks at the bar or something like that, some foolishness. Um, that's just a good way of if ending up. To save them, you're going to lose yourself. Exactly. Uh, Romans 13 and verse 14 is what I made mention of here a minute ago, which is a good verse to remember. He says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. If you make provision for the flesh, like if you give the flesh the opportunity to fulfill its lusts, you'll end up doing it. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him. If you put him on, he's your covering. He's your protection. Live by his commandments, in other words. And in Psalm 119, 101, the psalmist said that we should refrain our feet from every evil way. Psalm 119 and verse 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. It's far easier to avoid sin than it is to fight free from its grasp. And I'll say that again. It's far easier to avoid sin than it is to fight free from its grasp. And I think anybody knows that. It's really hard to break a bad habit. It's not hard to not start a bad habit. But once you get entrenched in that, it's really hard to get out of it. Ben Franklin, the father of our country, one of the fathers of our country, and the father of those convenience stores of a generation ago, right, Judy? Yes. Um, he said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of truth in that with medicine or other things. And then it says, and he went the way to her house. So he passed... Uh, through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. So having begun walking down the road near the whore's corner, going the rest of the way to her house is practically inevitable. Because once you start that first step, you break down that barrier, whatever that might be. And when you break down that barrier, it's really easy to just continue on. And I think in some cases it's a psychological thing. Once you've taken that first step, then you're like, well, I'm kind of already here. Right, I've already blew it now. I may as well. Why not? You know, and, and that's super dangerous because then, then you're in the realm of presumptuous sins where you're doing it in, intentionally um, and just thinking, well, God will have mercy on me. Well, he might not <laughs> because you, you're doing it on purpose. This is kind of like getting in a rut. Like if, if, you're, if you're driving and you get in a rut, it's really hard to get out of the rut. I mean, you turn your wheels, you know, turn them 90 degrees almost, and you can, sometimes you can't even get out of the rut. You're just going to continue to go in the tracks that you're in. And that's what happens with him. When he starts down the road toward her corner, he's in a rut now. And short of somebody just grabbing him and smacking upside the head, he's probably just going to continue right on down. And that's exactly what he does. Once he got near her, then she's able to seduce him with sexual advances and with flattery. Uh, Verse 13, we'll get into this verse later. It says, so she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him. Now at that point, it she's going to be pretty hard to resist. But if you were never near her corner and never even saw her, that would have never happened. And then she starts laying on the flattery in verses 14 through 21. She says, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the goodman is not at home, he has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with a flattering of her lips. She forced him. 
but she would have never been able to do that if he wouldn't have been close enough to her to even communicate with her, if he wouldn't have even been in the general area to see her and then be interested and enticed to get close, right? So it's that first step is so important just to stay off the path in the first place. But at this point now, he's followed her like an ignorant ox going to the slaughter, straight to her house leading to the paths of death, to the, to the chambers of death. Verse 22 and 27, he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, and as a, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. And then 27, her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. But it all started, and this is my whole point in this verse, it all started with going down the path going down the street near her house, near her corner. Just stay off the street. you got nothing to worry about. And we'll go on to verse 9. Just a quick note at the end of the sermon. The most important thing a believer in Jesus Christ can do is to be a member of one of God's true churches. If you're not already a member of one, go to pastorwagner.com slash churches to see if there is a true church or other believers of like faith near you. That's Pastor...